Jean Marie Mathias Philippe Auguste, Comte de Villiers de Lis Latum, November 7, 1838, August 19, 1889, was a French symbolist writer. Villiers de Lis Latum was born in Saint Brieuc, Brittany, to a distinguished aristocratic family. His parents, Marquis Joseph Tissan and Marie Francoise, Nail and Epville de Carfort, were not rich, however, and were financially supported by Marie's aunt, Mademoiselle de Carinou. His father became obsessed with the idea he could restore the family fortune by finding the lost treasure of the Knights of Malta, Philippe Villiers de Lis Latum, 16th century Grand Master of the Knights Hospitaller, was his ancestor, which had reputedly been buried near Quintin during the French Revolution. Consequently, he spent large sums of money buying land excavating it and then selling it at a loss when he failed to find anything of value. The young Villiers' education was troubled, he attended over half a dozen different schools, but from an early age his family were convinced he was an artistic genius, as a child he composed poetry and music. The most important occurrence in these Breton years was probably the death of a young girl with whom Villiers was in love an event which would deeply influence his literary imagination. Villiers had made several trips to Paris in the late 1850s, where he became enamored of artistic and theatrical life. In 1860, his aunt gave him enough money to allow him to live in the capital permanently. He had already acquired a reputation in literary circles for his inspired, alcohol-fueled monologues. Villiers began living a bohemian life, frequenting the Brasserie des Martyrs, where he met his idol Baudelaire, who encouraged him to read the works of Edgar Allan Poe. Poe and Baudelaire would become the biggest influences on Villiers' mature style, but his first publication, at his own expense, was a book of verse, Premier's Poesies, 1859. It made little impression outside Villiers' own small band of admirers. Around this time, Villiers began living with Louise Dionnet, a woman whose reputation scandalized his family so much that they made Villiers undergo a retreat at Solzheim's Abbey. Villiers would remain a devout, if highly unorthodox, Catholic for the rest of his life. Villiers finally broke with Dionnet in 1864. His attempts at securing a suitable bride for himself would all end in failure. In 1867, he asked Theophile Gontier for the hand of his daughter Estelle, but Gontier, who had turned his back on the bohemian world of his youth and would not let his child marry a writer with few prospects, turned him down. Villiers' own family also strongly disapproved of the match. His plans for marriage to an English heiress, Anna Eyre Powell, were equally unsuccessful. Villiers finally took to living with Marie Dantine the illiterate widow of a Belgian coachman. In 1881, she gave birth to Villiers' son, Victor, nicknamed Toter. A high point of Villiers' life was his trip to see his hero Richard Wagner at Trebson in 1869. Villiers read from the manuscript of his play La Revolte and the composer declared that the Frenchman was a true poet. Another trip to see Wagner the next year was cut short by the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War, during which Villiers became a commander in the Garde Nationale. At first he was impressed by the patriotic spirit of the Commune and wrote articles in support of it in the Tribune du Peuple under the pseudonym Marius, but he soon became disgusted with its revolutionary violence. Disaster came in 1871 with the death of Villiers' aunt, Mildecarinou and the end of her financial support. Though Villiers had many admirers in literary circles, the most important being his close friend Stéphane Malarm, mainstream newspapers found his fiction too eccentric to be saleable and few theaters risked putting on his plays. Villiers was forced to take odd jobs to support his family. He gave boxing lessons and apparently worked in a funeral parlor and as a mountebank's assistant for a time. Another money-making scheme Villiers considered was reciting his poetry to a paying public in a cage full of tigers, but he later thought better of the idea. 
According to his friend Leon Bloy, Villiers was so poor he had to write most of his novel of future lying on his belly on bare floorboards because the bailiffs had taken away all the furniture. His poverty only increased his sense of aristocratic pride. In 1875, he attempted to sue a playwright he believed had insulted one of his ancestors, Maréchal Jean de Villiers de Lisle Adam. In 1881, Villiers stood unsuccessfully for Parliament as a candidate for the Legitimist Party. By the 1880s, there was some change in fortune, Villiers' fame began to grow, but not his finances. The publishers Calm and Levy accepted his conscruels, but the sum they offered Villiers was negligible. The volume did, however, come to the attention of George Carl Huysmans who praised Villiers' work in his highly influential novel A Rebirth. But by this time, Villiers was dying of stomach cancer. On his deathbed, he finally married Marie Dantin, thus legitimizing his beloved son Toter. He is buried in Perlacay Cemetery. Mm.